We want to thank today's sponsor, Age Up. People are living longer than ever, but few can actually afford it. With small dollar payments now, Age Up provides guaranteed monthly income for life beginning at the selected target payout age between 91 and 100. Head to age-up.com forward slash that annuity show. That's age-up.com forward slash that annuity show to get started and see how Age Up can help you guarantee supplemental income for yourself or for a loved one living past the ripe age of 90. Welcome to That Annuity Show, the podcast that will make you an expert in explaining annuities to your clients. Give us 30 minutes each week and we'll shave hours from your client presentations. Now, here's your host, Paul Tyler. Hi, this is Paul Tyler and welcome to another episode of That Annuity Show. And with me, I have my regular co-hosts, Ramsey. Mark and Will. Gentlemen, how are you? Excellent. Excellent right. to be here. Good. Now we're we're taking a little bit of a a little bit of a deviation. You know, it's called that annuity show, but I think really what we're we've all been focused on is how do you actually create guaranteed predictable income or uh, streams of revenue that will offset your retirement expenses. And uh, annuities certainly are a valuable tool, but they're not the only one. Ramsey, do you want to introduce the topic and the special guest? For sure, absolutely. So thanks, Paul. And I uh, want to thank uh, our today's guest, Don Graves, for joining us. You know, one of the, one of the principal goals of our, our podcast is to make sure that we're bringing you know, a breadth of knowledge to our audience across lots of different areas. You know, reverse mortgages, like annuities, are, you know, are a discussion where there are, there are sides and there are a lot of conversations. And we thought this was an opportunity to bring one of the premier experts in the country uh, on the topic to come in. And, and one, uh, first, we want to hear about you know your background and how you came to focusing on reverse mortgages, um, and then secondly, talk about why you think they're important. And then third, something that's going to be very important for this audience is you know understanding you know how a reverse mortgage fits in holistically with uh, with a discussion around uh, its you know, its coexistence with with annuities. Is it a conflictual? conflicted relationship or a symbiotic relationship and you can bring light to that so anyway that's the that's the agenda but we'll start with the first question Don please uh, introduce yourself and tell us uh, tell us something about your journey hey thank you guys I'm Don Graves I've been involved in reverse mortgages for 21 years that's all I do before that I was president of a nonprofit in Philadelphia called Habitat for Humanity and my sister called me and said little brother you should take a look at this and she described it and I hung up. I was convinced she was going to prison. She was taking old people's money and I didn't want anything to do with it. It took me one year to circle back and say, what was that deal you were doing and reverse mortgages? And um, I went down, HUD had a home ownership center here in Philadelphia. I went and talked to HUD, talked to Fannie Mae, talked to three or five counselors. Because if I was going to do something, a good name is better than great riches. I wanted to make sure because my name was on the line. So I wanted to do investigation. So it took me a, um, a year to poo-poo it, four months to investigate it. And I realized, Ramsey and Mark and Tyler, that uh, Will, that here was something that if used appropriately could really change the landscape and, and the future of many, many retirees. That was 21 years ago. Now, since then, I've had about 16,000 consumer-facing conversations. About 3,000 people became clients. And all that tells you is that as good as reverse mortgages are for many, they're not always the right thing to do. I've told people, um, more people know this is not for you than I have yes. About six years ago, the American College for Financial Services asked me to come out and begin teaching there and contribute some curriculum. And I wrote a few books. And now I've got about 23,000 financial advisors, uh, asset managers, annuity producers working their way through the RICP course. I get a lot of time to talk to financial advisors about reverse mortgages and hopefully to uh, dispel some myths and, and give them some excitement. Excellent. Well, let's let's dive in and tell us 
tell us why you think re reverse mortgages are so important. And, uh, you know, also really, you know, what some of the misconceptions are. Reverse mortgages have been around since in Europe for more than 100 years. 1961 here in the United States, the federal government um, began to authorize reverse mortgages 32 years ago. It's one of the three-legged stool of a government-sponsored retirement. Leg number one is uh, Social Security, 1935. Leg number two is Medicare, 1965. Leg number three is the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, also referred to as the HECM, as the third leg of a government-sponsored retirement. So it's got some built-in safety features, and it's, it's very, very important. But oftentimes, when you mention a reverse mortgage, you ever mention it at a barbecue? Try to mention it at the 4th of July, see what happens. Three people leave the table. Your Aunt Janie is going to make a shank out of a plastic knife and fork, and she'll come after you if you're not careful. But, but mentioning a reverse mortgage is dangerous because 32 years as a federal program, there are a lot of things that can be tweaked, right? And, and in annuities, I know you guys know this. Today's annuity is not like 20, 30 years ago. So the, the program has grown. It's developed. It's much safer. 2013, it went through the Reverse Mortgage Stabilization Act. And we've got uh, regulators, insurance companies, manufacturers, um, institutions of higher learning, all saying this one thing, Mark and Paul and Ramsey and Will, that um, you must incorporate housing wealth into a retirement income plan, particularly for the baby boomers. Dr. Sandy Timberman, who started the MetLife Mature Market Institute, said this, reverse mortgages are the baby boomers' salvation. Why is that? Because they're living longer, they haven't saved enough, they're highly indebted. And any advisor worth their salt should be a AAA advisor. AAA means all available assets. Are you using your client's income? Yes, we are. Their social security, pension, employment. Are you using their investments? Sure, you're doing that. Are you using their insurances, including annuities? Yes. Are you using their housing wealth? Well, Don, I don't know how to use it. Well, the Census Bureau says housing wealth is 68% of the average retiree's total wealth is in their home equity. What do you mean you're not using it? How would you even call yourself an advisor and not be able to consider housing wealth? I'm going to stop there because I'll, I'll go into my I have a dream speech, Paul, and I don't want to go ascend the mountain. <laughs> but, but you can tell I'm passionate. I'm passionate when it's the wrong thing to do, and I'll tell you. But when it's the right conversation, I never know, Will, if reverse mortgages are the right thing to do. But I do believe wholeheartedly they're the right conversation to have particularly if you're doing any type of fixed income, safe money, any type of annuities, and you don't know how to incorporate housing wealth into the uh, conversation, I believe you're doing your client a disservice. Yeah, well, Don, Don that, that, that's gr the great background. And, and uh, uh, he, he, at a prior company, I worked with uh, Alicia Manel uh, at, at Boston College, who I know they, they've got a retirement uh, group up there that's uh, – a very strong believer in in just what you say that uh, that reverse mortgage should play an important part um, in a, in a person's portfolio. And to, and to your point, it's I don't know how many people you have left the barbecue when you say uh, reverse mortgage. I, you, there may be fewer if you say annuity <laughs> at the same yeah. at the same one. Um, but uh, just from a perspective of an agent, like if, I, if I'm an agent and uh, you know I see the value, um, but you know man, it's it's a it's a hot potato. It's like annuities and reverse mortgages. Can you put them in the same room? You know, what exactly are the, you know, what could go wrong, right? I guess let's start backwards. What would be a, what should I not be doing if I'm a, a financial planner or I sell annuities when I try to con convert, when I actually try to um, use reverse mortgages at the same time? And maybe, Will, this might be a question for you. Yeah, I think it's a it's a really really good question, um, and and it, that's a challenge. And I think that uh, I'd like to hear Don's opinion on this, but um, you know there is definite um, you know regulatory interest in this in this topic, um, and concerns regarding you know converting uh, someone's equity in their home and using that to purchase an insurance product. Okay, uh, so it's definitely there. Yes. So, so, so Don, what I just, we'll start off with what I can't do. I can't sell, I can't do a revert, help do a reverse mortgage for will and take that money to fund a life insurance contract or annuity. Is that basically, that's the, the no go, no fly area, no fly zone. Is that right? No fly zone. Sure. 
the, the uh, let's, we'll talk about in a moment how an annuity producer generated $47,000 of income by understanding um, how to do it in a proper way, legally, ethically, yes. morally, and compliantly. But what, what are the things that we should be concerned about? And high, high integrity, high integrity. So there are four things primarily that most broker dealers, manufacturers would say, we, we want you to stay away from this when it comes to reverse mortgages. And number one, we don't want you practicing law without a license. We don't want you in there talking about rates and terms and fees and, and stuff that licensed people should be talking. Don't do that. Number two, um, you're not going to receive compensation unless you're a licensed loan originator. And so apart from that, there's no referral fee. That's illegal. There's no compensation unless you're a licensed loan originator. And I personally don't think an annuity person should become that. Number three, um, you can't take the direct proceeds of a reverse mortgage and invest them in an annuity uh, or, or any insurance product or any equity. And number four, and everyone doesn't have this, but there are a lot of folks that say, um, you should not make a direct buy recommendation as an annuity producer. You shouldn't say to your client, you should definitely do this. And so we built those four guardrails around our process and to help advise. Now, some people listen to that, Paul, and get discouraged and throw their hands up. Well, what good is it? Stay tuned. Don't don't turn off yet because the good stuff is coming. But we got to keep you out of jail, right? We're gonna keep you legal. So we've got to do it in such a way. Listen, it's legal, ethical, moral, and compliant. That's our standard for doing that. So those are the four no nos there. So Will, any anything to add there? Yeah, and I actually I'm gonna go back to something Don mentioned that, and and I I, I don't recall the exact metric, but out of all the clients he's worked with, it's not every one of them is not charging ahead with a reverse mortgage. The ones that uh, that he's disgusted with and that it makes sense for and that aren't funding it, aren't are, are funding an insurance product with it. I, 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 I wanna go back to some of uh, Don's opening remarks about how when you're looking at someone's financial picture and 68%, I think is, a, is the percent that he used, might be in, inclusive of their, of their housing that's, that's gotta be part of the conversation um, as far as what your plans are, what your plans are. We talk a lot about in this, this, this podcast about objectives and what your objectives are for retirement and how you're gonna achieve those. Um, we haven't really talked about the asset, the main asset that folks have besides their, maybe their 401k and, and it's, it's their house. So it should be part of the equation and part of the conversation. Um, and, I, and I think that Don did a really good job of explaining the, the separation that should be, you know, that, sh that should occur with respect to uh, an insurance producer and someone who um, it might be talking to someone about a reverse mortgage. So, so, so Don, and just to se segue to, to where you're headed. So, you know, I go, you know, you said you worked in at uh, Habitat for Humanity. By the way, we've all volunteered I think multiple times, Will, right? To build I mean, several houses. I think we've helped build or roofs <laughs> we put on. It would spin our, it's one of our, uh, uh, it, I guess one of our corporate uh, partners. Yeah. So, so just to, just to use, continue with the housing analogy, Don. So, you know, the, the old adage, look, if, if the only tool I have is a ha hammer, every problem looks like a nail, you know, I want to avoid that in retirement. So I, how do I use reverse mortgages if, you know, given what you just said, how did, how, you said something about actually somebody generating a lot more income for a client and, and solving a bigger problem because they understood how this could work in a portfolio. Maybe tell us a little more about that. Sure. The, the, the person listening, um, the annuity producer, you've got to generate um, products that pay a fee typically. That's why you listen to this show. And you say, well, Don, you just said the reverse mortgage, I can't get paid a referral fee, I can't pay, get paid a commission if I'm not licensed. Why would I talk about it? Let me tell you why you want to talk about it. Um, what's the number one reason, Paul or Ramsey, that if an annuity guy or person is looking and, and the folk are, are hesitant to purchase the annuity, what's the number one concern that the client has? That's you're, you're, liquidity. I'm like, you're locking my money up for how many years? Yeah. Eight years, yeah. nine years, 10 years? Yeah. Right whatever, and you say, we'll give you a 10% penalty withdrawal, but it's not cumulative. I don't use it for three years, can I get 30 the third year? Say no. So liquidity, fear of loss of control is the number one reason that the annuity producer has to overcome. Now think about this. 
we've been building bridges for years, right? But it wasn't until the Golden Gate Bridge was built that they actually put a net underneath. And uh, you would think, well, how come no one thought of that sooner? Why'd so many folk have to die? Someone, well, they did it. And after they put that net up, they, they came in faster and under budget and it became so popular that people would jump off the bridge. The construction workers would jump off because it was kind of cantilevered out five, 10 feet extra on each side. And uh, so having safety um, meant you can have a different conversation, not jumping off the bridge. So here's your annuity producer listening to this show, watching it, and they're saying, Mrs. Jones, we want to move 300,000 or 200 or whatever over here because the client wants safe money. They want safe, predictable, all the, all the benefits that we know about. And, but the client wants to hug their money. Now, imagine the annuity producer had a liquidity replacement tool that I want to move $250,000, Mrs. Jones, over here, and they, they want it. You've talked about the SuperDex XJ3000 and what it does and all of that. They're, they're all in. They see it. But they want to, the, the money. Coronavirus has panicked people. You know how many people pulled out, maxed out their lines of credit in <laughs> these last few months? People, how many people sold all their stock for liquidity? So that's a big concern. Now, your advisor says, Mrs. Jones, if we were able to give you to move this 250, but also have 250 available and, and full liquidity, would you want to see how that works? Um, the husband and wife shake their head. We can do your Superdex XJ3000 and have 100% liquidity? Yes. And uh, how are you going to do that? And your advisor says, we want to use all your available assets when developing a plan. We want to include your income, insurances, investments, and your housing money. Is that okay? The client says yes. And he shows them a, a mechanism that allows them, because how many retirees have already heard of a line of credit? 100%, right? So you say, we want to turn your house into a unique line of credit that's going to make $250,000 available on a $500,000 home. And the, the thing about this line of credit, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, is that if you use the money, you're not required to make a mandatory payment. Oh, that's great. There, uh, and there's no 10-year draw period. As a matter of fact, that $250,000 sitting over here is going to grow for you at about 4% each year. Tax-free, you can take it out, put it back. You can hug it and talk to it at night if you want to. So we're going to do that for you. But now we're going to move this other 250 over to the super decks that we talked about. Does that seem like a good strategy? Right there, right there, Will, people's hair just caught on fire. What? Oh, I didn't know you could do such a thing. How many more annuities? How many more clients could you serve, annuities could you place if you had a legitimate government-sponsored and supported liquidity replacement tool? Write that down, liquidity replacement tool. Because that's what a reverse mortgage is. Stop using that name. Say, Mrs. Jones, I have a federally insured liquidity replacement tool that could be useful to you. I, I want to talk to you about using your housing loan. Or how can we use home equity to create the liquidity you want so we can do something with these other assets and get them to be more productive? If, if one agent, if one of the 6,000 people, soon to be 10,000, Ramsey, who listen to this podcast says, wait a minute, if I did that one time where the person was reticent to make a move and that was $250,000 that I may not have gotten, or maybe they're going to do 100 but now I went from 100 to 250 or zero to 250. I don't know what the commission on that is, but if I were an advisor, I'd want to know how to have that conversation because that's reasonable. That's in the best interest of the client. And that's, Paul, an example that's happening every day. But most annuity folks, um, they sound like Charlie Brown's teacher to sometimes. You're talking and the client hears wah, 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 wah. Um, give them something. Uh-oh, it's my phone ringing. Oh, it's my wife. Uh, mashed potatoes, honey. Okay, I got it. I had to call the order. <laughs> All right, Paul, you got to cut me off, Ramsey. You know I can talk. And, well, uh, I, I, I've got, got, I've, I've got a that question. Excerpt, the mashed potatoes expert excerpt is going to go on LinkedIn. <laughs> 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 if we're only so easy with my wife. <laughs> Careful, guys. Um, the, uh, the, the what I thought most interesting, Don, in a conversation we were having earlier was just how broad the, um, the net worth demographic is for, for reverse mortgages. Like, I guess my initial thought was always that it was for individuals that were kind of using it as their you know, last resource for income, for sustainability. And 
based on a lot of the conversations we were having, it's, it's a very broad market out there with folks with millions and millions of dollars that can take advantage of this opportunity. Well, absolutely. Uh, here's a, we talked about this yesterday, but think of the annuity. Think of the advisor. I get a call from a, a advisor from Big Wirehouse. They said, hey, I've got a client, a retired CEO of a large multinational pharmaceutical company, lives in a four and a half million dollar home. He says, I manage $5 million of his investments. He's looking at a reverse mortgage. And I said, why? He says, well, he, he's, he's maxed out his home equity loans and lines of credit. He owes $2.1 million on a $4.5 million home. His debt servicing is $21,000 a month, principal and interest. And the client says, I think there's a reverse mortgage that can uh, replace my mortgage and then free up that cash flow. Now, think if you're a person talking um, in that situation, and the client says, I wish I could do some of the things you were talking about. The life policy with an accelerated death benefit for long-term care, um, or this annuity with such and such a rider. I wish I could do that, but right now, I've got a mortgage. Now, uh, 50 to 68% of boomers have a mortgage, home equity loan, line of credit on their property. And so, again, you're talking to them about the X day 3000, maybe some life insurance, uh, but they can't hear you. They can't hear you because they've got this mortgage payment. So for this, think about this. To be able to eliminate this man's mortgage with a jumbo reverse mortgage and free up $21,000 a month in cash flow, what does that mean? That means you can reduce the draw in your portfolio. That means you can, how many planning conversations? Here's a question. If you listening or watching, how many planning conversations can you have not only if you think about the reverse mortgage as a liquidity replacement tool, but as a mortgage replacement tool. If 50% of the people you talk to and boomers have a mortgage, one person, um, Ramsey, uh, a retired pastor and a nurse, were paying $13.41 a month in their mortgage. Their advisor took my course, they talked to them about it and said, what would retirement be like if you didn't have to make a mortgage payment? They said, it'd be great. But they also said, hey, those things you were talking to us about, maybe we could look at this. So what they ended up doing was doing a reverse mortgage that liberated $1,341 a month. They got a John Hancock um, long-term care policy when Hancock was selling it, $541 a month to cover both of them. And they got an $800 a month um, life insurance policy from Mass Mutual. And you say, how did they fund that? They funded it out of their income. Did it impact their cash flow? No. They replaced what they were going to be doing the next 20 years and just redirected the income they had to create a different planning scenario. Well, that happened because the advisor, the annuity advisor, um, understood liquidity replacement tools and he understood a mortgage replacement tool. That if your client has a mortgage, you're sitting in front of them. Listen, annuity, listen, annuity producer. If your client is sitting in front of you with a mortgage on their property and you're doing your fact find and you see it and you have nothing to say about that mortgage, you are leaving influence and impact and benefit on the table. I don't think you're doing what's in the best interest of your client. Think about this, Will. Will, you're in compliance. Here's a conversation I have with compliant folks who say, oh, the reverse mortgage, blah, blah, blah. I said, now, your guy's in front of a client, and they happen to look down, and they say, oh, they've got a $2,000 a month mortgage payment. They say, that's pretty high. Seems like last time I met with them, it was um, – the balance was high on this. And the, and the advisor will ask the client, curious, Mrs. Mrs. Jones, what's the interest rate on this deal? And they say 14%. Would you expect the advisor to say something on a regular mortgage home equity loan if they're paying 14%? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why are you paying that much? You, would expect, you wouldn't expect them to say, hmm, I can't talk about that. Let's, let's talk about this. They would say, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, how did that happen? They say, oh, eight years ago, 10 years, we had a bankruptcy. We needed it. That's the best we could do, blah, blah, blah. The advisor would say, well, what's your credit score now? Oh, it, it's 820. Would you expect the advisor to say something like, you know, you can probably go from 14% to 4%. Would that be reasonable to say that? Absolutely. The advisor who didn't say it would be criminal and negligent. So the, the, the client says, that would be great. But you know what would be better, Mark? If we didn't have to pay it at all, whew, that'd be a relief to just eliminate the whole thing. 
Now, if that advisor understood that there was a mortgage re replacement tool called a home equity conversion mortgage that could eliminate and save them $2,000 a month, would, you exp would it be reasonable for that advisor to say, I think there is something like that? Absolutely. So annuity folks that are getting in front of clients that have um, cash flow constraints, like the pastor, Dr. Barton, or, or the, the CEO down there at the shore, and you're sitting in front of a client, they've got a mortgage, and you have nothing to say. Woo! Oh, Ramsey, stop me now. I feel my I have a dream speech coming on. I feel it. Listen, <laughs> you've got their... All right, Ramsey, I don't... My books are in the background. I don't know if this is audio or visual, but and I, I started with annuity providers 21 years ago. That's before I got to wealth managers and all that, I was working hand in hand with the annuity provider uh, when I started. And so I know this audience well. If, if we can give them here on this show a few tools that keep them legal, ethical, moral, and compliant and say, well, what if you did another $4 million in annuity business? Because you understood a few things. Would, that, would you want to know those few things? Absolutely. Mark, I don't know if that at all answers your question. Yeah, it does. And I guess, that, is there any um, like equity to debt thresholds that you know, are, are a good barometer to go by to kind of gauge whether it makes sense or not to even begin the conversation? Sure. Um, I think 50% for a 65-year-old today, just general broad terms. As interest rates go up, that'll get a little bit less. So your client's got a $300,000 house and they're 65. I think a reverse mortgage can make about uh, 150 of that available. They've got a $600,000 home, they're 65, think 300. So think 50%. As we come through the coronavirus, that, that will get a little compressed and that get back down to 40, 45%, somewhere around there. But we're at the lowest interest rates allowable by HUD right now at the recording of this podcast. So there are a lot of dollars available. And I don't know when this goes out, Ramsey, and um, I don't know how people are going to get to me, but you better get to somebody because here's what's going to begin to happen. If I say, and it happened in 2008, we're in a liquidity crunch. Um, JP, uh, not JP Moore, Chase eliminated their home equity loans. Uh, Wells Fargo limit, you can't get a new home equity loan at Wells Fargo and the other banks that are still holding suit, it's getting harder um, to get it. In 2008, what came, that, that happened before, and then all of a sudden they canceled, froze, capped, or reduced existing home equity lines of credit. Now, on top of that, there were 5 million people who asked for mortgage forbearance um, during the coronavirus. 5 million people, and they're re-upping those. So here's what we think is happening. We've got a liquidity crisis. Um, it's harder to get liquidity. And then the, the home crisis, if you say they're, they're whoever they are, but there is some data that says we may see a 20% decline in home values and it may stay there for the next three or four years. I don't think that's unreasonable. So if there's an opportunity to have a conversation about liquidity in your property, would you want to have it now while the, it's still up or when it drops 20%? And if you can um, turn your home into a liquidity replacement tool or a mortgage replacement tool and have some dollars left over, that's going to help the annuity producer. They need to know how to have that conversation. And so 50% um, right now, Mark, for a 65-year-old. Um, but we'll give them, the, I'll tell them whether you can get real accurate. We can get real granular um, for you. But it's a broad concept. So, so remind us how old, how old does one have to be? Is it 62 is the minimum age? Yeah, but I didn't, we didn't say what a reverse mortgage is. Let me go back for the definition. A reverse mortgage is a loan for retirees age 62 or better. Uh, only one has to be 62. The other one just has to be age 18. So, Paul, you're in you're good shape there when you get there. And uh, <laughs> he has a young wife. And so uh, I used to have a joke about Alabama, but I won't share it here, Will. And uh, 62 or older allows them to convert a portion of their home's value, turn it into tax-free dollars without giving up ownership, coming off title of the home, or required to make a monthly mortgage payment. The amount of money you get is based on three things. Um, the age of the youngest borrower, the value of the property, and the current interest rate. A reverse mortgage must be a first mortgage. So we have to pay off um, first whatever existing mortgages exist. 
And finally, the loan gets repaid when the last surviving borrower permanently departs the house, moves or deceases. At that time, whatever um, the interest has accrued on the loan you've taken out has to be repaid in 100%, 100% of any remaining equity passes on to the client if they move, the heirs or the estate if they decease. And that's the reverse mortgage. But if it's underwater though, that's the bank's problem, not- That is the bank's here. problem, right. Yeah, and, and, the, and, and the government would step in. So just, just let me kind of be super practical about that. So I'm uh -huh. well, talking to Mark, Mark's my client. Um, this is a great tool for him to take his assets, take most of his, a huge amount of his 401k, put it into annuity. Well, you're going to be taking notes on this. Um, and, but I'm reliant on a reverse mortgage to pass the liquidity tests. Uh -huh. So practically speaking, um, Don, I would need to call you in, execute the reverse mortgage first, right? Then, do the, uh, the purchase the annuity, how long would it does it take from the time I would bring you in to meet with Mark to actually have executed a reverse mortgage? Is that, is that a six week, 12 week process? What, what, how, how do I think about this in terms of time and how I'd manage a client relationship over that period? And, and with, with all of that, what we do is case design and consultation, Paul. And um, in my 21 years, what I have is uh, select advisors, not everybody, but Ramsey's people, your folks, would say, Don, I'd like a case design and consultation. Mm -hmm. They send us something and, and we, we send them back and make sure it's legal, ethical, moral, compliant. And they say, Don, um, I'd like to pass the baton to your team to talk to my client. I said, okay, depending on what you can do, you can start some of your process now. You don't necessarily have to wait a reverse mortgage may take um, six weeks, coronavirus 10 or 11, now things are opening up. So typically we're at about six weeks there to get from start to finish. And depending on your broker dealer compliance, you don't always have to wait, but that's kind of our process. So what we do is what our team does is we see the annuity producer, the financial advisor as our client. And we do a case design, a fellow says, Don, I've got a client with a million dollars and um, they want to roll over to a Roth conversion, take 400,000 of that, roll it over because of the SECURE Act. They've got a single daughter, blah, blah. I heard you talk about this um, somewhere. I say, great, send me, go to this website portal, take three minutes, send me the information and I'll show you how to do a Roth conversion in a single year. I wouldn't advise that because that's going to put your client in a new tax bracket, provisional income, IRMA, all that's going to get adjusted but I'll show you, you tell me how much they can add to income. And then let's say it's $40,000 a year without impacting them. So we're gonna roll over $40,000 a year into a Roth conversion. We're gonna pay the taxes on that from this line of credit. They had a $200,000 line of credit that was established with the reverse mortgage. And that's growing at about 4%. So that's, that's growing what's at $8,000. The taxes are gonna be $9,600, depending on their tax bracket. We're gonna use the growth from that line of credit plus a little bit of the principal to pay the taxes over 10 years. And down the road, they're gonna have 400,000. And so there's some tax diversification, um, you as a provider. So it, that, that's too much to cover for those who are listening. But that's a strategy that says, how can I do life insurance, long-term care, Roth conversion, tax bracket management, um, keep, and, and if uh, some David McKnight stuff, hey, I wanna keep people in a lower tax bracket. Yeah, if they spend one more nickel from the wrong account, you're gonna blow that up. But this line of credit or the, or the dollars that can come as a monthly benefit for a period certain or a lifetime are tax-free. So we can structure it with the annuities, the remaining IRA, and this other thing, we can structure it to make sure we keep them in the, 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 a lower tax bracket. That's the advanced course, but to the folk who are listening, you better understand how taxes work because you you know, maybe Ramsey taught me this, when is a million dollars not a million dollars? <laughs> when it's in an IRA. <laughs> and so, hey, you got a partner on this deal, your partner is going, you don't know what his portion is going to be when you take it, but if we can have some tax diversification conversation now, that's great. Well, how do I diversify my taxes? Keeping a lower tax bracket. How do I keep my social security from being taxed? By having an alternative source of income 
that doesn't doesn't impact your Medicare, doesn't impact your Social Security, doesn't impact your provisional income. Is that a worthwhile thing for an advisor to know who's sitting in front of clients? You bet, all day long. And uh, right before this call, a fellow said to me, uh, Don, I'm just not sure how it incorporates. He had a, I said, okay, how many retired clients do you have on your property and casualty business who are over the age of 62? You know what he told me? 200. I said, you have 200 people who are homeowners over the age of 62 in your practice. I said, here's the question. How many of those clients, if you said to them this, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, if we could use your home um, to create cash flow, reduce risk, preserve assets, improve liquidity, or even add new dollars back into your retirement savings, one of those five things, if we could use your home to do that, here's the question. Would you want to see how it works? So I asked them, if you ask that to your clients, what percentage of them would say, yes, I'd like to see how that works? 100%, 99%. The one who doesn't need Social Security, they send the check back every month, not them, but the rest of them want to see how it works. That's So when you say to someone, what do you think about reverse mortgages? Oh, gross. Yuck. What would you think about if we could use your home to improve your cash flow, reduce risk, preserve assets, enhance liquidity, or even add new dollars back into your retirement? Uh, would you want to know about that? Oh, yeah. What is that? What's that, Rand? They want to know about that. You see, that's what people have. People have a... a what they believe they understand about reverse mortgages, but they don't know what it is. So if you've got someone you're doing life insurance, long-term care, annuities, fixed index, um, equity index, uh, immediate annuities, and they don't know this stuff. They don't know the basics. Not, not what you heard Fonzie say or Magnum PI or not those guys. You can't cover that in a 60 to 90 second commercial. But they take a little time and they say, wow. So we help advisors all the time to double their income. I mean, not, not the top producers, but say, hey, if you did a million dollars more in annuity production, would that be worthwhile? Would that be something? Just a million dollars more. Yeah, Don, that'd be something. Are you willing to invest a little time to learn how to have a conversation? To do it in a way that's legal, ethical, more and compliant. To be I like that, by the way, yeah. that, uh, that foundation you keep referring to. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, Listen, I made that up for you, Will. And they said the compliance guy's coming on. I said, oh, I better, better go. <laughs> Look, I, I think we're, uh, this has been a great conversation. I think we're probably running up against, uh, running up against time. Uh, the, the, the main thing we want to make sure is we give Don, first of all, thank you for, for coming. Thank you. But, but, but give you the opportunity to, to, to let the audience know how they can uh, reach out to you. Yeah, thank you, Ramsey. Um, housingwealth.net, www.housingwealth.net. Real simple and contact us, that will get to me. And, um, and I want you to do that. I, I'd like, or my email is askdongrays at gmail.com. Either one of those, you've heard something today and you say, Don, I want to know more. I've got a full course that I teach at the American, uh, filmed at the American College, that's five and a half hours. I've got a smaller 55 minute overview that I give it to you for free. And you say, Don, I want to learn more. Um, just go to Housing Wealth. Dot net www.housingwealth.net and you can reach out to me and my assistant but listen folks um 87 percent of retirees own a home that's a fact 87 there, there's seven trillion dollars in unmonetized home equity if you're sitting in front of clients who are retired and you don't know what to say about their housing wealth you don't know how to incorporate it you're not doing what's in the best interest of their of the client and here's what's going to happen. Somebody else is. I had a brand an advisor the other day says, Don, I'm in a competitive situation. Said, the other advisor doesn't know how to use housing well, and I do. He said, can you give me, said, get your client over here as soon as possible. <laughs> I said, has he won yet? Uh, this afternoon, I think. Okay. My sister said, hey, your 1130 right. call was going. I said, I'm with Ramsey. Ramsey's important. Tell the mayor he has to wait. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you hey, so much, Don. Hey, thank you, Don. And uh, Will Mark, thank you. And uh, listen, yeah. thanks for all of you. Again, Don, thank you so much. We'll put links to your uh, website uh, and your email in our show notes. And uh, please like us, subscribe to us, and uh, tune in again next week for another great episode of That Annuity Show. Thanks. All right. Take care, Paul. Thank you all. 
Hi, this is Ramsey Smith, co-host of That Annuity Show and founder of Alex.FYI. I want to talk a little bit about AgeUp. They are our first sponsor here on That Annuity Show, and they have a very unique and innovative product. As most of us know, uh, people are living longer than ever before. Uh, unfortunately, fewer and fewer can afford it. With small dollar payments now, AgeUp provides guaranteed monthly income for life, beginning at the selected target payout age between 91 and 100 years old. Head to ageup.com, that's A-G-E-U-P.com slash that annuity show to get started and see how AgeUp can help you guarantee supplemental income for yourself or a loved one living past 90. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, please rate and recommend us on iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also get more information at thatannuityshow.com.